I'm having to do some breathing and just trying to center myself because I am really, really worked up right now. I'm really excited. And if, any, if anybody's been watching me on social media or any of that stuff, you can see that I'm just, pff, just dumping stuff out there. And it's probably pretty overwhelming to anybody watching. They're like, what is going on with Dave? What is he doing? He's on this crazy energetic, like, bleh, just dump of creative energy. And it's true. And this morning, I was on my way to go meet with a, a friend to discuss all these things and talk about filmmaking and creative passions and <clears throat> pretty much everything that I've been thinking about for the last couple of years, but especially in the last few months. And I got to thinking about where I come from and my own upbringing and my education and the nature of distractibility and ADHD and being diagnosed with an inability to focus. My entire life I've been conditioned, I think all of us have, to think that an inability to sit still and focus on what someone is trying to present you, being whatever the educational system is told to teach us at that time, that inability to focus in that moment is a disorder, it's a problem. We need to be able to focus on what is being presented to us in that moment. And anyone that watches the news and interacts with kids or just in general recognizes that there's an epidemic right now of distractibility. And we view that as a disorder. It's classified as a disorder, a psychological inability to focus. Now, when someone tells you that there's something wrong with you over and over and you get in trouble and your grades struggle and you have to come to makeup classes and you have to meet with tutors and you have to have you have to sit longer and have material put in front of you more you got to wonder is there something wrong with me or is there something wrong with the system through which i am being taught Again, coming back to my creative outpouring lately, it probably comes across as pretty manic. And you can label it that as you want to. But for anyone that's watching me, and hopefully anyone that interacts with me, this is the most sane I've ever felt. Every single thing that I'm putting out there into the world and every conversation that I'm having and Every moment that I'm experiencing in my life is the most exciting thing that I could be doing right now. So know that when I put something out there, I'm excited about it, and it's something that I am pursuing fully. Now, inevitably, some of those projects are going to fall by the wayside. That's not going to stop me. I'm experimenting with what I enjoy and what I'm passionate about. And to be honest, if you're not enjoying watching it and you don't want it in front of you, don't pay attention to me. I'm going to keep doing it. And I, I hope that something about what I'm saying right now resonates with you. If you're creative, recognize that there's nothing wrong with dabbling in something, seeing if you enjoy it, committing yourself to it, and then deciding that it's not for you and walking away. This can be a creative pursuit, it can be work, it can be a form of exercise, it could even be a relationship. We're, we're taught that once we've committed to something, we have to do it fully. And I absolutely believe that you should follow through on things that you said that you're going to do. But when you hit a point where you recognize that it no longer serves you, Gently remove yourself from that. You can do it in a, in a way that people 
respect and they understand. It's, it's just all about communication. Communicating your intent. We have lost track of our ability to communicate fully with people in our lives. And it's my opinion that that is something that's leading to a lot of discord in our world. And it is my passion, one of my passions, <laughs> one of my passions to start the conversation. I want to engage with people. I want to start a conversation now. And I already have with some people. Some people are recognizing that I'm here to talk. I'm here to listen. I'm here to engage. I, I'm not going to, hopefully not going to interrupt you. I will do my best to listen fully. And yeah, I'll probably be really excited about something. And I might get all amped up and move around a lot. And yeah, my eyes get really intense. Because I am focused on what you have to say. And I see myself in you. A friend of mine, Vanessa, messaged me yesterday. And she said that she saw... Hi, Vanessa. Um, she saw a tag on a, on a photo that I posted, uh, Gratitude365. And she said that she's been focusing on being grateful for things and she asked if I had any tips or suggestions or suggest yeah just ways of practicing gratitude and I've got three tips and you can choose any one of them or none of them or all of them or any combination of them and they're these number one get a journal and start to write down your thoughts do it free of judgment, free of any idea of what the outcome of it will be. Don't worry about your handwriting. Don't worry about the content of what you're writing. Just write for five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, whatever, until your pen starts, stops moving and your mind slows down, write. Number two, along the same vein as the journaling. I just talked to my friend Ryan yesterday. And we had a really awesome conversation about life and just everything. Hi, Ryan, by the way. Um, life and spirituality and purpose and mindfulness and losing yourself in the, in the future and the past and not being present. And I suggested to him as a way to slow your mind down. Bring yourself down into the moment. Use your phone. There's an app on any iPhone probably any other type of phone, that's a voice recorder app. And if you're driving, hit record and start talking to yourself. That's how I got here. I, I did this like two weeks ago, and that's how I started doing a podcast because I was like, the first maybe two hours were just verbal diarrhea. is just dumping and dumping and dumping and dumping and dumping and dumping, and then I was present. And the thoughts that were starting to come through were aligned with the, the direction that I want to be moving in. And it was a cool feeling. It was like this emotional release. And when I hit stop, I felt this incredible lightness of being, this energetic aliveness kind of moving through my body. So... You can journal. You can record your thoughts. And listen, if you want to record your thoughts and send them to me, I would be happy to listen to your thoughts or your journals, whatever. Or you just want to talk, let's Skype. Give me a call. Reach out to me. I want to talk about these things. Number three, and this is something all of us do every day, but almost none of us do consciously. Breathe. I know it sounds crazy. Breathe. Right now, if you're watching this, breathe. And throughout your day, in the moments in between activities, when you're really thinking a lot, or you're rushing to go somewhere, or you're sitting in traffic, 
or you're listening to this, take a really deep breath. Feel your heart pounding in your chest and the world around you and the world inside you. And let it go. It's a beautiful Friday. It's a beautiful day. This is a beautiful moment. I'm starting the conversation of my life. And I want you to be part of it. If you want to join the conversation, you know where to contact me. I can't wait to talk. Have an amazing day.